Hi, thank you so much for your time. My name is Nora. My full name is Nora Shikin Binti Abdurrahim. I am a part-time student from University Utara Malaysia. I'm a working person. I'm working plus studying. So how about you tell me what is your full name, age uh -huh. and your occupation? Hi, I'm Ferdaus Chia. I'm 35 and I'm working in corporate communications. I was formerly a Catholic before I became Muslim. In 2014, I embraced Islam. Is there any reason why you convert to a uh, different religion? Is there any reason? Maybe because of marriage? Uh, no, I didn't embrace Islam because of marriage. I was religious before in Christianity. I believe in God. But over time, I lost faith. There's a lot of pain and suffering going around. And then back in Australia, I read other philosophies in life. I was more like an atheist. I believe I could change my own destiny and that there was no God at the time. But after that, when my grandma passed away, then I realized that probably there is somebody powerful in control of death. And that's when I started to believe again in God. But I did not want any religion to tell me who that God was is but over time i met a colleague at work in singapore and she introduced me to islam i went to study about it also had a dream that led me to further believe that islam is true and that uh, god exists eventually i fell in love with the religion i felt like i was always believing in islam there wasn't any worry about the lifestyle changes because when you really believe in something right then you want to commit 100 percent so how long already you converted to islam now would be eight years so you've been to malaysia yes many times so yeah. currently you are residing in singapore yeah residing in singapore i see so you're often traveling to malaysia so we are neighbor Singapore and Malaysia, we are neighbor country. I believe that our culture, especially when it comes to religion, is quite the same. We celebrate the festivals, um, we go to the mosque, learn how to recite the Quran. Maybe you can share your experience in Malaysia mm -hmm. and then how you found out our intercultural communication happen when you come to Malaysia and then traveling to other country. Malaysia is not very different from Singapore in the sense that the city part of it. I love Malaysia because when you travel from Johor all the way up to north, you get to see a lot of nice natural terrain. Like you have mountains, you have hills, you have palm trees. When I'm in Malaysia, uh, the people there are also very friendly. Before I became Muslim, it was different things that I see. My frame of mind was just to go shopping or to eat. Now, as a Muslim, you try to find a masjid, you find a musola. You are greeted with a different kind of environment. So I just recently went to KL. I was in the musola and my son was with me and I need to take my wudu. So Apache uncle said, hey, I help you take care of your son while you take a wudu. So it's very nice that feeling when people understand that you're going through some difficulty and they help you along the way. Mm -hmm. So I find that the feeling of meeting people in Malaysia was very friendly and nice. It's good to have a musola at every shopping center. Singapore don't have that. Sometimes you hear the azan going off in different mosques. That is something I really like about Malaysia. I see. Thank you so much. <clears throat> okay, I'll go further to the next question. Yeah. So, um, in your opinion, what is the role of intercultural communication? The role of intercultural communication is one, to understand each other better. I mean, you just recently saw the Quran verse being recited at the World Cup. We have made you into different races and cultures and that to know each other. Intercultural communication helps us to understand each other better. By understanding each other, hopefully, we can respect the boundaries that each culture have and create a society that does not jump into judgment so quickly. Maybe Chinese use the word bakute. People always think it's pork because yeah. of the word ba. But if we understand the language, ba means meat. So meat doesn't mean it's pork. It could be lamb, it could be chicken, it could be anything. So in Hokkien, the ba means meat. So when you hear bakute, it means directly translated meat bone tea. 
but people have always had this impression so when they hear bakute they might think it's haram they think it's the pig really so, i never i never tried bakute <laughs> <laughs> yeah but I of course there's, i must find the halal one still <laughs> You know, yeah. even if it's how they make halal bakute. So, mm. uh, move to the next question. Yeah, applying intercultural communication skills is it effective in our multicultural organization? Yes, there's a lot of strength in diversity in sense of racial and cultural diversity because if we are just concentrated on one particular race, there's only so much you can see within those lenses of your your ethnicity but if you have diversity then you realize there's more to this life and this world and by looking at many different angles or lenses you can form a much more holistic viewpoint of the organization where you want to succeed in life so you can actually help the world find solutions compared to just a particular group of people yeah indeed yeah i totally agree with you you have so many i mean your opinions is so on point <laughs> this is what i want for this interview it's so on point so maybe i think i just left two questions what are the differences in malaysia culture and i want to ask about the common thing in in the culture and then the differences maybe you can differentiate our culture with other country yeah, i think singapore also have this where we brand islam like a malay religion in southeast asia but if you go to saudi arabia it will be very arab feeling of islam and it might close some doors to other cultures because they might think oh how do i relate to islam if i'm a chinese and trying to learn islam so if i want to relate malaysian culture with places like iceland or further up north People over there value things differently. Religion-wise, I think the West, this might be a generic statement. When we adopt Western values in Asia, we tend to be more secularized. Uh, when you go over there, I do ask them what they think about religion. They think it's just something that people believe, but it's not necessarily important in their life. But whereas in Asia, and particularly in Southeast Asia, like Malaysia, Singapore, Indonesia, religion plays a big part of their lives. Asian countries tend to do so. People that place God in the center of their lives believe their sins. They believe what is right. They believe what is wrong, things they can do and things they can't do. So they have stronger moral values. And that is very important for a country, in my opinion, to progress. Because if you have God at the center of your life, then you know where to take the guidance from. If you don't have God at the center of your life, maybe this leader is good. But every man has flaws. Every man has weaknesses. So they might not cover all aspects of life because God is divine. He can see every angle. He see what's before you, be after you and everything. So a country that put God at the center of their life, God will help them succeed much faster and better in all aspects of life. Not just in the material wealth. God will even progress you mentally, socially, physically there's so many other areas like even resources natural resources just like a, a spouse who puts god in the center of life they will help the whole family grow in a much more wholesome way so that's how i see asia compared to the west culturally we put god at the center of our lives whereas in the west a person would be at the center as i said that all your answer is on point <laughs> but i want to add um mm -hmm. maybe one or two more questions have you ever um actually um culture shock happen in your life maybe you can explain a little bit about culture shock that happened in front of your eyes and maybe you wanted to give some advice about it <laughs> the culture shock does not necessarily mean a bad or negative thing it's just different. For example, maybe Chinese, we are calculative. For Malay, I think what I observe is probably we indulge in a lot of food. In Asia, the food is the culture. We really take pride in the rendang or the nasi lemak or the sambal goreng. But when it's bad for our health, then we need to make it healthy version. In the Quran, we say halal and toiban. So at least give the option of healthy. It's important for our health and our future generations. Uh, we, were, we were all trying to fight obesity, diabetes and all that. So what are we doing as a society to challenge that? Mm -hmm. So one of the things I think we can do is lower the prices of vegetables or incorporate certain meals that are healthier. We should also improve our knowledge in nutrition. Then 
Mm-hmm. You are actually changing the whole society's look on on health. Mm, I totally agree with you, and I think to be compared with the Westerners, they were born to eat the all the salad. <laughs> they they were born to learn how to make it. And last but not least, okay, I have one last uh, question, which is mm-hmm. um, I think maybe you can share about what currently you are doing. I I saw the Instagram post, so I said uh, this is so interesting to share actually about the output and. But mm. translating into Mandarin or other types of um, languages? Currently, I, I am finding other languages that's yes. translated. Of course, those that are approved and have gone through vetting from the Arabic words to, to different languages so that I can hopefully help people bridge that gap to understand the Quran better. The ones that I'm sharing online is mainly the Chinese ones. The Quran look very pretty and nice and also they do have simplified Chinese, so it can reach to people in China and even to Singapore and Malaysia because the Chinese there read simplified Chinese mostly. So if you do have friends, I have even friends who are Malay wants to buy because they want to work off or want to give it to a Chinese friend. I have Chinese people who also want to buy. Or those who only read Chinese books, finally they have something that they can read and they are curious about the Quran, then they get the book. There are also people who have Chinese families, they are Muslims, they are Chinese, they marry a Malay, but they have children and their families Chinese, right? So this book, they just leave it there, some of them will read, maybe, inshallah, fall in love with Islam, want to embrace Islam, yeah. So this is the opportunity for them to to find the words of Allah and hopefully get inspired. Inshallah, inshallah. <laughs> yeah. Congratulations for your um... I mean, your journey to actually spread the positivity and then um, you are currently translating the Quran to different languages. I hope that there will be more crowd, more people wants to learn about Quran. No, oh, I, I don't translate. <laughs> you don't do the translation, but uh. you are the one who wants to do the marketing wise yeah thank you so much yeah. uh, for your time today i hope that um, i can share this with my fellow classmates and inform my lecturer as soon as i can so this paper will be submitted uh this uh 26 november and i hope mm. that uh, yeah i can score my <laughs> inshallah Inshallah. Make dua for you also. Yeah, and, thank uh, you so much. I make dua not just for you, your family, also for the Ummah and all of us. Hopefully, we can all live in peace here on this dunya and also find a place together in Jannah Tufra Inshallah. Yeah, inshallah. Good time. I'm so grateful today. <laughs> thank you. Have a nice day. Good night. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Good night. Good night.